Hey everyone, quick word from Future Sinister here. Um, this game is called The Moon Sliver, but for the entire playthrough, I call it The Moon Silver. And I only realize in editing that for months now, when I've considered playing this game, I've called it the wrong name. The Moon Sliver, not Silver. So, I apologize heavily in advance. Hello everyone, Sinister Art here, and we're back with another video. Today we are playing The Moon Silver. Right mouse button? No, oh, there we go. Much brighter. Okay. I am not entirely sure what this game is about, but it looked interesting, so we are playing it today. Ellie was a sullen and beautiful girl, the youngest of all of them, with a mind unfit for loyal for lofty thoughts. She had come she had once come in here to see if there were any old firewood. Otherwise, she stayed in her cluttered house where it was warm and familiar. Some tools in here. Can we leave? Okay, we can. Oh. Yesterday, four people lived on this island. Now only one remains. There's a small little... So an island of some kind, it looks like. I have next to no idea about what's going on. But it seems maybe we're following Ellie, who is our main character here. We have a variety of different houses. We have many ruins of some kind. A dust storm going on. Only one left on the island. We searched in the house for sometimes firewood, but otherwise... Oh. Can we just locate that area? It is just us on this island. Why are there ruins? Why is it so quiet? Why do only... Why does only one remain? Can't go in this house. It's a very bright game. It's really hard to see further ahead. They reached the ruins and strolled leisurely through towards the shoreline. Issa could remember when the old building still stood here, filled with families. Ellie and Isa. I'm sorry, he said, and he cried because he often cried during these talks. For what, she said. For a lot of things. We have Ellie and Isa. These conversations were not new. Long ago, Isa had learned to love Abel despite and for his despondency. She hugged him as the wind tossed her hair, her long gray hair around. Ellie, Isa, and Abel. Venturing out amongst the ruins. So who's our character number four then? What is this? A strange, acidic smell emanated from the pipe. Lovely. Other buildings here. Issa kept a smile on her face, although she did not feel like smiling. Something clearly happened between the two. She sat down beside the flashlight. What about Ellie? Has Ellie mentioned anything to you, she said? She didn't take it either, he said. Nor did I, nor did Abel, she said. And yet, it's gone. What is gone? The rest of junk casts shadows on the opposite wall. How do you know Abel didn't take it, he said. Because I trust him, she said. He's a dismal man, but he would never hurt any of us. Do you trust Ellie? Daniel didn't answer immediately. I trust all of you, he said, because that's how we have to live. Daniel, you're the last one I gave the key to, said Isa. Daniel stared at the mysterious control panels. He didn't meet her eyes. He, ne he never met anyone's eyes. I didn't take it, he said. Why would I take it? I'm the one that told you it was missing. Daniel, Isa... Ellie, Abel. So something went missing. Did that lead to some kind of conflict between the three that led, led to only one remaining? Also, why is this entire place just, like, destroyed? Is this a post-apocalyptic world type thing? I'm saying she knows more than she's telling us, said Ellie. She keeps the chapel locked, and she's the only one with the key, said Ellie, leaning on the barrels and folding her arms. So you're saying she took it, he said? My problem is that she's a liar, said Ellie angrily, fiddling with the knobs on the machine she paced around. And I have to keep explaining this to you over and over again. You don't know her like I know her. Exactly. You're not an impartial judge, he said. Why is my light blinking? Oh. Guess I recharged the flashlight. What is your problem with Issa, Daniel said, putting his book down. He was annoyed at being un interrupted here. So clearly the uh, seeds of distrust are being sown amongst the group. Someone took something, arguing over who took what. Oh, we got a, a mysterious liquid had drained from the tank and into the water long ago. What mysterious liquid? Why around this island? It appears that this island was something much more considering we had the uh, submerged power lines over there. What's this? This place was a forest once. These skeletons are all that remained. Issa could remember the glorious trees living barely. Damp tangle of trees and foliage free to run wild. Okay, so it does feel like we're in a post-apocalyptic setting. The world has ended to some degree and 
these tattered ruins are all that remains. Alright, let's try going in here. Come back when night falls. Okay. Is the clock already running, or is it just some something that will happen later? Oh, some of these fireplaces are going. Oh yeah, we have some submerged buildings over here. Completely underwater. So, um, the water level is rising. Probably, you know, end of the world scenario. So we got some fire. I remember the moon still shined. With each night, this was bathed in a warm silver. And the shadows were mysterious and friendly, and the island was a place of joy. That was many years ago, and since it disappeared, this place has become cold and stark. Cold and stark, plagued by an inexplicable sense of loss and despondency. Daniel and Ellie are young. They do not feel it. They don't remember what it, the world used to be like. But Abel and I do. And we are both filled with longing, and for intangible joys that it can no longer provide. For friends that do not exist. For feelings that cannot be reasonably felt. When I was younger, I smiled because I felt like smiling. Now that smile is a disguise. So the moon disappeared somehow, is what I'm picking up on. Yep. Yep. I wonder what the key is to, exactly. There is an evil man on this island, and I know him well. We played together as youths. We have cried together. We have eaten together. We have loved the same women, betrayed the same women. He is my constant companion and my worst enemy. He puppets my arms and legs and mouth to his own selfish ends, and secretly hurts everyone I love as I watch, helpless, with their unshed, unfelt blood on my hands. He gives my flesh with indescribable pleasures and blights my soul with un unutterable despair. His name is Sin, and we are irrevocably bound together. Surely there exists no hell worse than this. Okay, so it seems like um, someone on this island has uh, got some issues to deal with. Alright, this one also has a fireplace. I don't think there's anything in here. Oh, firewood. She glared at him. I'm going to get wood, she spat. Did you think I was too stupid to know, he said. I'm going to get wood. What were you and Abel doing at the house yesterday? While well, I was climbing the mountain, he answered, casually flipping through the book on her table. It was covered in dust. I've been thinking about life, said Abel, sitting down, and death and uncertainty. Daniel stared at the pile of wood. He hadn't burned wood for months. Let's talk about Ellie instead. Abel was silent for a moment. What about Ellie, he said. Daniel didn't need to answer. Abel swallowed. All right, let's talk about Ellie. Abel often visited Daniel. He loved to talk, and Daniel loved to listen. Ease and I were out for a walk, said Abel as he entered. I thought I'd stop by it before he got caught up in a book. Daniel put his book down. Hello, he said. His expression confused Abel. Oh, it is now nighttime, it appears. So I think we need to go back to the underground thing. But clearly we have some... You know, conflicting love, cheating, stealing, all at the end of the world. When nothing but ruins, a missing moon, and a submerged earth remains. How did the moon disappear is my question. What happened to it? Just one day vanished? What's this? Have we gone over here? The night was wild and cold. The monster's tracks leading from the hatch were brand new, but the wind quickly erased them. That's scary and concerning. I'm sure it will not be anything of consequence. Is this not night? What else do I need to do then? Where do I go? Oh, there is that one building left that was locked. Maybe we can lock it now with the key. So the moon vanished. The world began to end. Life started to die out. We have four people left on this island. They are having a myriad of conflicts. What are you? Daniel was sitting, th still thinking about his talk with Abel the day before as he absentmindedly picked up the book. Something caught his eye, or rather a lack of something. So something was missing, that one, probably an altar. Oh, the moon's silver was gone. So that's what was taken. A bit of the moon? The word of Hector the Second, the woodland teeth, the monster of the forest, well, we saw some tracks earlier, so, was more tenacious than other demons. It hated the people of Hector, and desired to take the island away from them, and it lurked in dark corners and unseen passageways, scheming horrific schemes. It came to pass, uh, it came to pass that Ursula was taken, stalked by the woodland teeth, and the dark underground, attacked, and dragged down to hell. Then the moon came to Hector in a dream, and said, Hector! The time has come. Your great enemy has arrived, and you would all do well to tremble. For his power, 
His great and his depravity is unspeakable. Go, take the moon's silver from its pedestal and do battle. And so Hector went to the chapel of infinite light and retrieved the moon's silver and went into the tunnels. And now the moon's silver is gone. There's clearly some kind of prized possession amongst these people. O oh world, O oh prison, dingy white, O oh ghostly shadows gray, your whelming lies of false delight, and dark and cold as moonless night, and bleak as sunless day. The word of he Hector I. The moon's silver was written by the pure spring rain upon pages of dry leaves and found by noble Hector. The moon spoke to Hector, saying, Take this, the moon's silver, and make for it a place in the chapel of infinite light, for it is a holy document. Man cannot read it, but its every letter is known to the demons of the night, and greatly feared. Know that it will protect you, even should my light cease to bathe tonight in holy silver. Give it a place of honor, and treat it as a prized possession, for it is your weapon against evil. And so Hector took the moon's silver, and placed it in the chapel of infinite light, upon a silver pedestal. And the night was warm with light, and the day bright with warmth. And where's the, where's the third? Oh. Hector descended, darkness, terrible whispering, infinite and deep, did not know how long he wandered, promises of brutal tor torture and mutilation waiting, beyond teeth of the forest, spoke the holy incantations written upon, returned to the surface. Again the moon came to Hector in a dream. The woodland teeth is vanquished, it said. Your people are safe for now, but it still waits, lurking in the depths. It fears the moon's silver, and it will not dare appear again while the holy document remains in your possession. But know this. Should the moon's silver ever be destroyed, even my divine light will not be able to save you from the wrath of the woodland teeth and the darkness of hell. Keep it safe. Keep it ready. And may you live in prosperity on the asylum that I've given you. Let your prosperity be a sign the words I speak are true. So I can't tell if they are creating mythology around an end of the world scenario, or if this is truly ingrained into the actual lore of this story that there was a divine piece of literature here, the moon silver, um, that vanished, and when it vanished, it brought ruination upon the island, unleashing demons upon the earth. And given that we saw the uh, footsteps leading away from the sewer, the manhole, makes me think that that ruination came upon them. But I think it's now time to go into the underground. And this is where the woodland teeth supposedly resided. Is this not night? Where do I go now? This is very much night. Night has fallen. What do you propose I do? Where do you propose I go? What's this? The door rested shut. It would never open. Oh, well, alright. Submerged ruins. Dead trees, rain, an unending sandstorm. You remember when we used to climb the tower over there, he said? I wonder how long before the whole, whole island is underwater. Excellent question. What do I do now? What am I missing? What's this? Issa didn't know what the object was, but she remembered her father tinkering with it in his workshop when she was just a girl. The workshop and the adjoining home were far, now far underwater. She was not a young woman. But even now, seeing it brought her comfort. Abel came in. How do I get into storage, he asked. She shut and locked the box. I told you before, she said. I forgot, he said. I don't go there often. Press the first three until they click. Leave the fourth alone. Now, where is the other box at? Here? Oh, the key's right next to it. Ellie put her clothes back on, his eyes unfocused, not really seeing her. He didn't say anything, her lips were pursed in that eternal ignorant scowl. He got up from the bed and opened his box. He used to believe that one day he could plant the last few seeds and they would be able to grow food again. But now he knew that the ground was poison. Issa had given the seeds to him for safekeeping. Issa loved him. Issa trusted him. His eyes filled with tears, but he didn't let Ellie see. I'm sum supposed to meet Issa for a walk, he said. He didn't. She didn't answer. She just left. The last of the spiders died long, long ago. Oh, okay. We are now underground somewhere. Charging up the flashlight. So this is where the woodland teeth was. Makes me a bit uneasy to come down here. Ellie was uneasy. The darkness had never felt this menacing before. 
It seemed alive, watchful. What was that? below for many years. I guess we'll see if we can find the uh, code for this one somewhere uh, down the line. But it is quite dark and I don't want to completely run out of battery. Um, I guess we'll go this way. Ellie, Daniel's voice echoed around the tunnels. Silence. This one remains. You couldn't explain the feeling. It was as though something was lurking around every corner, staying out of sight just ahead of her. Daniel heard soft, scratching footsteps behind him. He turned, shot his flashlight on the tunnel. Nothing. This is fucking expansive, oh my god. There's no running mechanic, it's just simply... You walk around. He called again, Ellie? Still no answer. But he heard footsteps from ahead. Oh, a flashlight. He didn't even have time to cry out as the shadow silhouetted in his flashlight beam lunging towards him. So something got him. He ventured down here and likely whatever it was maybe killed him. But here's his flashlight. Terrifying thought. Alright. This will go straight ahead this time. Rather unnerving. I'm scared I'm going to see something. This is wide open. It's lovely. What the fuck? She felt its breath before she felt its claws, and then she was gone. Who's she? Isa? Ellie? I wonder if the woodland teeth is, to an extent, evil talking about sin shadowing his every walk is the woodland teeth an actual thing or is it simply the the manifestation of, of Abel's darker tendencies I guess we head down the other hallway now see what lies in store for us there in this way to uh, another room of some kind sorry I am like slowly I think losing my voice she never felt like this before. She knew these tunnels well. She'd been down here hundreds of times, yet she was lost. Lost, confused, and afraid. Okay, do I need to interact with these somehow, or... Something over here I need to do? Hmm, I guess not. There's nothing over there. Um, I guess we start venturing back towards the, uh, main area then. I figured we'd get, like, some kind of clue as to how we open up that final, you know, thing, but I guess not. Is this going anywhere? Have we been here before? I don't know if we've been in this room before. We have not. Um... A family of rats lived among the crates of dried food. They're perhaps the last animals left alive. Lovely. Love that. Anything I can use, though? No? Alright, well. So that's the exit. How do we get in here? I don't know how to open that. Maybe we just have to, to leave and go into the, uh, the cellar area. Well, I think it's definitely nighttime now. Issa couldn't remember the last time she had been under the mountain. There was no reason to come here, but she looked everywhere else. She clutched the old knife in her right hand. Yesterday, the moon's silver went missing. Today, 
Ellie, Daniel, and Abel were all nowhere to be found. She knew the word of Hector by heart. These sinister implications were not lost on her. <coughs> Alright, so Moon Silver went missing. They all started pointing fingers. Hell were locked in some massive love triangle. Issa is now wandering around trying to find where everyone's at. What are you doing here? Many ages of the past, he said. Do you know where Ellie and Daniel are, she said? I do not. They are missing, she said. They are missing. And the moon silver is missing. Don't you understand? Do you understand what that implies? I do. The night will fall in a few hours, and we need to stick together. We can sleep in the same house. Mine or yours. We'll keep the fire burning. We'll keep the door locked. And we will pray, Abel. We will pray to the unseen moon for mercy and protection. We can stay in the dark. It thrives in the dark. We can stay in the dark. Are you happy? Yes, I'm happy. Please, Abel. Well, shit. There were tears in his eyes, and he struggled to control his voice. Issa, I know you. I know every inch of you. I know every corner of your mind. You aren't happy. None of us are happy. Issa didn't respond. I'm staying here. The tears were flowing freely now. I would like it if you stayed with me, Issa. Please, stay with me. Issa didn't respond. It will find you, Abel. Let it out, Issa. I destroy the moon silver. Issa was shocked and silent. I burned it yesterday, after I talked with Daniel. Her eyes were filling with betrayed, angry tears. What? Abel, no, why? Do you want to be dragged to hell? Do you want us to be dragged there with you? We're already in hell. This island, this horrible, barren, lonely island, this place of sin. This is hell. I saw the blasphemous scraps of paper Jeremiah found those many years ago. I read them before they were destroyed. Perhaps I was the only one who did, and I did not believe them. But I have lived life since then, and I have seen the truth of their words. Issa could not respond. As tears streamed down her face, she just kept walking toward the sound of his voice, and I have clutched in her hand. You did not read the blasphemous scraps, Issa, but I did, and I remember them with in incredible clarity, supernatural clarity even. Fear not the dark shadows or the scratches in the night, for the woodland teeth is your salvation. It is your escape. It said this, and more, Issa. The woodland teeth, teeth is not here to take us all to hell. It is here to take us away from hell. She could see him ahead, her flashlight beam cutting through the sickly fog. He was sitting in a chair, too, a book on his lap. As she approached, he could see that he was crying, too. I believe the word of Hector, she said. I will not go to hell. Please, trust me. Please. I believe the word of Hector. And she put the knife to her chest, point first. No, no, Issa, please don't. Stay with me. Don't leave me alone. I love you, she spat tearfully. I love you so much. As she closed her eyes and pushed, she remembered where the heart was located, from one of her father's old books. Abel was too slow to, slow to catch her falling body. He knelt beside her and sobbed for some time. He was not a strong young man anymore, but Issa's body was light. He would take her out to the water. She'd always loved the water. But then what? Read? Read until it found him? No. He didn't feel like reading anymore. He was ready to be rid of this entire cursed island. Books and all. He simply would wander, aimlessly and freely, to take one last look at the island and feel the wind blowing his memories away. And then when night fell, he would return. And wait. Oh, I'm still walking. Morning dawn of the empty island, cold and bright and windy. The moon silver. So that was the moon silver. A tale about the end of the world and all the horrifying situations that come along with it. I guess it's up to interpretation on how exactly the world ended, if it was a product of the moon silver being lost, if it was the moon going away, if if all of that mythology was true, or some manifestation of, of Abel's shattering mindset, being alone on an island with three other people. I enjoyed it. It was short, sweet, to the point, 
I encourage you to all check it out on Steam. I'll leave a link down in a pinned comment and in the description if you're interested in playing more. Um, otherwise, I have been Art, and I'll see you in the next video.